Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Token Post interview. Today we have invited one of the keynote speakers of our blockchain open forum, Mr. Nick Snoledo, the founder and CEO of ODX. Thank you so much for having me, <laughs> and thank you to uh, everybody who's tuning in. Uh, ODX is currently new to the world. However, before this, you were the one of the co-founding members of Zerpes, the largest fund, techn technology fund in the Philippines. So could you explain how you came to this market? What inspired you to get into this uh, cryptocurrency world or blockchain wise? So maybe I'll start first with the roots of Surpass. Mm -hmm. um, many years ago, back in November of 2001, my partners and I, uh, we had a strong realization uh, because of a data point that we had encountered. Mm -hmm. uh, back in 2001, there were six million cell phones and two million PCs in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So we were very surprised. We said, why is that the case? And it was that realization, it was that moment we understood that, oh my gosh, uh, the reason why there are not as many laptops and desktops mm -hmm. as cell phones, as mobile devices, is that in an emerging market like our country, most people cannot afford to buy laptops and mm -hmm. desktops. We then concluded uh, the internet will grow through the mobile device because two drivers of internet access, uh, two things need to happen. Cost of access needs to go down, but cost of the device to access the internet must also drop. Mm -hmm. You cannot sell toothpaste to people who don't have toothbrushes. Of course, of course. We concluded that the future of the internet must be mobile, and that was really the roots of Surpass. Mm -hmm. We only had $1,350 of paid up capital uh, to start with. When, when, when you was it. decided when, to start it? When we started Surpass. <laughs> uh, and we know we never raised venture capital mm -hmm. and we never borrowed money, not even from friends and family. Mm -hmm. We grew the business and eventually in December of 2014, we listed our company in the Philippine Stock Exchange. We mm -hmm. became the first mobile consumer tech company to list in our country's stock exchange. As we started to evolve our business across other business lines, mm -hmm. uh, e-commerce, ad tech, we started noticing a common pain point across each consumer tech vertical. It was that for 90% of our users, they were only online five to six days out of 30 days. To out paid, of 30 days? Out of 30 days to paid mobile data. Mm -hmm. The specific uh, unit economics look like this. Their average phone bill for 90% of emerging market users mm -hmm. will be $3.50. Mm -hmm. But they will buy prepaid internet, prepaid access, mm -hmm. prepaid airtime credits in 35 US cent increments. Mm -hmm. That means only 10 out of 30 days will they have prepaid airtime credits on their phone. Mm -hmm. If they have a smartphone, five of those 10 days, they will buy a 24 hour data sachet. Mm -hmm. The balance of the time, they need to be on free public Wi-Fi, which you can imagine isn't that plentiful, or they go on free Facebook. Mm -hmm. So if you are a consumer-facing business in an emerging market like the Philippines or Indonesia, you will have artificially inflated customer acquisition cost. Your daily active users, mm -hmm. that metric will be below what it could be because people are not online every day. Mm -hmm. And so it makes it much more difficult to execute on a transactional model mm -hmm. when it comes to emerging markets. But we believed if you make your store, your website, your app, your game, your media site available 30 out of 30 days, you should make more money. Of course, of course. Then your consumers just being online five out of 30 days. Right? And I presume that is why you well founded ODX. Well, that eventually led to ODX. We first started a <laughs> test platform mm -hmm. where we took our services and our partner publisher services and said, let's test this uh, hypothesis mm -hmm. that uh, ubiquitous, uninterrupted internet access for a whole variety of services will make consumers engage more. Mm -hmm. The result was that for every 100 gigabytes of data that we sponsored, we drove $18,000 worth of transactions. Mm -hmm. Those same partners came back to us and said, Nix, love that our service is free mm -hmm. to serve on your platform, but most of our users go directly to our apps and websites. How do we make those free to serve as well? 
-hmm. That's when we thought of the open data exchange. So could you expand on how actually the system of ODX works to our viewers? Yes. So ODX has a B2B mm -hmm. and a B2B2C uh, 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 portion of the platform. So one segment, B2B, is very straightforward. Any publisher, whether they be as large as, say, an Amazon.com or as small as a Nixisbigshop.com, <laughs> can connect to any internet service provider, whether they be as large as a large telecom company or as small as a boutique internet service provider to make the service free to serve for their users mm -hmm. to uh, bulk buy that data. Mm -hmm. So ODX facilitates that entire system. The B2B2C portion is a percentage of all transactions are given for free in ODX coins mm -hmm. to the users of our partner publisher services. Mm -hmm. So let's say I'm user of Nix's Big Shop .com. Mm -hmm. I'm told, Nix, thank you for using our Big Shop. Here are some free ODX coins. Click on this link to use them and download them. Mm -hmm. I click on the link. I download uh, the ODX wallet. Then I can start using the coins to access uh, other data-free services uh, on that wallet. Mm -hmm. So the goal really is 80% um, of all internet users in the world are not online 30 out of 30 days. Mm -hmm. Well, despite the fact that they have a cell phone or a exactly, device. Exactly, because of the, the you know, it's, it's no diff. I mean, um, consumer services are always sashayed in emerging markets. Mm -hmm. Uh, shampoo is sold by the sachet, not by the bottle. Mm -hmm. Medicine is sold by the tablet, not by the bottle. Mm -hmm. um, cigarettes are sold by the stick, not by the pack. Mm -hmm. It's because of the purchasing power of consumers. Why should data be any different? Mm -hmm. But we took it a step further. We said, what if it's free? Mm -hmm. What if you didn't have that point of friction? What if you could bridge the digital divide using digital? Mm -hmm. And so, um, uh, ODX becomes such a strong, powerful proposition, especially for the blockchain community. Think about all of these blockchain projects. You have so many stable coins, so many fintech apps, so many uh, ad tech apps, so many uh, retail decentralized services. Mm -hmm. uh, there are thousands of decentralized applications around the world, but for 80% of internet users who live in emerging markets, mm -hmm simply they cannot even access these services because mm -hmm. they are not online every day yes yes their utility is diminished mm -hmm. that is the pain point that we want to solve mm -hmm. we are agnostic to what service the user wants to access we just simply want Providing them the to app. be able to access it so i have kind of trouble understanding because data as you might say internet access is currently provided by a third party through internet servers how is internet access available using blockchain technology? I mean, if you do use blockchain technology, and how does the market system of ODX work? So for us, it's very straightforward. It's really a marketplace. Mm -hmm. uh, because right now, I'll give you an analogy. Uh, um, I want to go back to the roots of cryptocurrency and blockchain, which is Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. when, Bit when Satoshi Nakamoto, whether he's a person or a group of people, uh, created Bitcoin, the first thing they wanted to solve was the problem of digital cash. Uh, if in the physical world I hand you a hundred won bill, mm -hmm. uh, you do not need an intermediary to decide whether or not I'm good for it. You yes, physically yes, see yes, the bill, yes, of course. you see it's no longer with me, it's now in your pocket, <laughs> right? When you put it in your wallet. Yes, yes, yes. On the internet, digital cash prior to Bitcoin was not being used, was not possible. Because if I handed you that 101, mm -hmm. how do you know that I still, mm -hmm. that I deleted it on my server? Yes, of course, you can't trust somebody. So you needed someone like PayPal mm -hmm. to facilitate that, so they can central authority. It. Yes, yes. When you're sitting here in Korea, that solution works perfectly. When you live in an emerging market like the Philippines, mm -hmm. I remember the first few times I tried to shop online, mm -hmm and pay using PayPal, I was rejected, even well, though I could afford it. Well, well, because uh, PayPal had looked at the Philippines as a high fraud incident market. Mm -hmm. And so they were ex their algorithm perhaps was extremely cautious mm -hmm. about approving and disapproving transactions mm -hmm. uh, through PayPal. So the Philippines were a liability for PayPal. Correct. Mm -hmm. So I felt that pain point where a central authority could be very wrong about something like 
my being able to purchase, let's say, a new video game or a new uh, T-shirt on mm -hmm. the internet. Something like Bitcoin meant that uh, you are leveraging off the wisdom of, of crowds. Mm -hmm. uh, a central approach to what we're doing is something like an internet.org, mm -hmm. where when Facebook was doing internet.org, uh, some it was a very walled garden approach where they had selected, cherry-picked certain partners to be free to serve. The partners who were not included in that ecosystem mm -hmm. uh, felt that something like internet.org violated net neutrality principles. Mm -hmm. Why is someone like Facebook choosing who gets free internet access mm -hmm. uh, versus someone who isn't? They're essentially anointing the winner yes, in yes. these various categories. With our approach, whether you are very large or very small, we do not discriminate because it is a completely open, trustless system mm -hmm. that's leveraging off the blockchain. So from the perspective of the user, uh, will they access some sort of a form of exchange where they can buy internet access, data access, as you would say, through ODX platform? So there are two users in uh, ODX. Mm -hmm. The first user is really the publisher. Mm -hmm. Of course. The publisher says, uh, my users are uh, on these various ISPs. I will purchase data from those various ISPs to make my service free to serve. Mm -hmm. Guaranteed if they have a strong business model, mm -hmm. they should make more money because yes. users will spend more time with them. Yes, so yes. that is user number one. There is a B2B2C component to ODX mm -hmm. where the users of our publisher services, the guys who buy the, the, the cakes online, the books online, yes. the t-shirts online, they are told, uh, uh, they are given ODX coins as a reward for mm -hmm. using those services. Mm -hmm. So for that user, uh, he gets it on his wallet and then he sees what can he use the ODX coin for. Mm -hmm. um, a whole variety of things, but it's always consistent where it is data as transport. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of projects where it's data as information. Mm -hmm. For us, it's very basic. It's very lowest common denominator. To get utility, you need to be online. Yes. And so that is what ODX represents. The user can say, oh, I want to buy 30 minutes of access to this game. Mm -hmm. I want to buy one hour of access on this media site. Mm -hmm. um, most business models on the internet are a freemium business model. Mm -hmm. Whether you're Netflix, whether you're Spotify, whether you're mobile game. Freemium is the predominant business model of the internet. To an emerging market user, there is no such thing as a freemium business model. <laughs> yes, of because course. he has to separately buy the access. Eh? Yes, yes. So do I play this game? means do I have to go to my mom and pop store, buy yeah. airtime credits for data access to this particular game? Mm -hmm. We want to solve that mm -hmm. using ODX. So uh, I was kind of curious to ask, so what could be the specific use case of ODX coins then, ODX tokens? So maybe people can buy, for instance, people can buy, you know, uh, uh, right off 30 it. minutes of access to your website, your media platform. Mm -hmm. uh, we can go one and one. One hour of access to Gifto, uh, uh, two hours of access to Cycle Clean, uh, uh, 15 minutes of access to PayX. And they can also buy that using fiat currency? Uh, well, our main currency or uh, service within that wallet is really oh. going to be the ODX coin. Uh, well, so, well, I mean, of course you can get the ODX <laughs> coin using currency. Uh -huh. um, but that is really uh, a separate conversation on a market per market basis mm -hmm. as we work with different on-ramps for fiat to crypto in those markets. So currently you are one of the panel speakers and one of the keynote speakers in our blockchain open forum. How did your presentation go and what did your presentation deal with? Uh, so the panel was a discussion on the future of platforms. Mm -hmm. um, uh, prior to the panel, it was also a very enriching uh, backroom sort of conversation as I got to know my other fellow panelists. Mm -hmm. um, uh, my position has always been, uh, it doesn't matter to the end consumer what protocol you build on. It doesn't matter to the end consumer what database you built on. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter to the end consumer what programming language you built on. It depends on the it service. It has to that... work. <laughs> yes, of course. So, so my stance is the best technology mm -hmm. is invisible. Mm -hmm. uh, let me use a very basic technology that's been around for years. Mm -hmm. The anti-lock brake system of your cars. Mm -hmm. uh, you're driving your vehicle. Someone cuts you on the road. 
you quickly slam on your brakes, and then you steer away. At that very moment, the ABS system of the vehicle kicks in. Mm -hmm. So much technology kicks in that allows you to control the spin of every individual tire. Mm -hmm. To the person who's driving the car, all he did was press one button, mm -hmm. his life was saved, and he did not care what the ABS system did. Yes, yes. My 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 uh, I've been around the block. I mean, I've been a I'm a tech entrepreneur who's been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's interesting how whenever there's some new technology, most of the dialogue revolves around uh, how many transactions can this do per second? Uh, what is the level of decentralization across um, uh, of of platform A versus platform B? Mm -hmm. uh, what is the uh, consensus mechanism and um, uh, how does it uh, uh, differ versus this consensus mechanism? Again, for the consumer, it doesn't, it doesn't care. really matter. <laughs> does it give? Does it include me to allow me to get financial services? Mm -hmm. Does it give me healthcare? Does it allow me to get the best games? Does it allow me? Uh, does it give me investment opportunity? Am I able to see offers from advertisers that I really like? Mm -hmm. I mean, these are the things that give value to them. Yes. Yes. And so. I think that has really been my stance in that uh, particular conversation, which mm -hmm. is I've tried to focus really on the utility to the consumer, the value to the consumer. Mm -hmm. uh, what you choose, what technology you choose, what protocol you decide to build on, all of these things follow uh, uh, what gives the most value to the consumer. Mm -hmm. Then you have something that's sustainable. Then you have something that's scalable. Then you have something that's repeatable. Mm -hmm. Then you have something that they'd be willing to pay for. Mm -hmm. Um, and then on the presentation, of course, I spoke about the Open Data Exchange and how we really want it to be, uh, uh, make the internet ubiquitous across multiple emerging markets. I mean, I'll, in Korea, I'll be looking forward to seeing the expansion of ODS as well. Well, we're looking at really seeing which Korean companies, brands, and services we can bring to emerging markets. Oh, yes. Because uh, Korea has an amazing broadband infrastructure. Yes, Everywhere I go, <laughs> above ground, <laughs> underground, 10 floors up, it doesn't matter. It's super fast. Yes. It's available all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and so in most cases, the entrepreneurs that succeed here uh, and in other similar markets, whether it's Japan, United States, mm. uh, wealthy countries, when they go to an emerging market, they tend to uh, struggle a bit because they're not sure why people aren't online on their service every day. Mm -hmm. Why uh, you have to find another payment mechanism outside of credit cards because mm -hmm. um, they don't have credit cards. Oh, yes. Uh, um, for example, when e-commerce sites, uh, a lot of them came from Western markets, first came to emerging markets, they're like, huh? We have to do cash and delivery? <laughs> oh my gosh, the address that we need to uh, um, uh, bring the item to, it's called back of the church. <laughs> there is no address. Uh, you're going to markets where there's so many homes without uh, sitting on places without any street names. Mm -hmm. So then you need to uh, have a different approach. You have to have a different business. You have to adjust. Mm -hmm. um, ODX allows them to solve at least one of those major pain points which is your users will be online. We'll be able to, to partake access. in your apps. Yeah, to access your products and services. Thank you so much for your insight. Okay. And thank you so much for your time. Thank also. you again for having <laughs> me and uh, appreciate the opportunity to share uh, ODX to the Korean market. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. That was Mr. Nick Noledo, the founder of ODX. Thank okay. you. Thank you.